What's up everybody? This is Chris and this is my channel Barn on 11970. Thank you as always for checking out this video. Now before I talk about anything, I want people to try and deprogram themselves by doing the following. I want you to listen to what I say with an open mind, eliminate the emotions, and just use common sense and logic. Because what I speak of in this video and other videos is not about the specific events that occur. It's the fact that we are programmed to just believe something because it was said without question. Now, obviously, the topic of discussion has been the Robin Williams death. The problem I have with it is the way that the media reports things as fact. And if you know anything about law, there's a thing in law called hearsay. Hearsay is when somebody claims to have maybe told about an event or said something happened or said something didn't happen, and they have no evidence to back it up, no proof. Well, that's not admissible in court. They can hear it. It can even be stricken from the record. But hearsay means that somebody is saying something happened, but they, can, they can't back it up with proof. That's like saying that your husband or your wife cheated on you and they have no evidence. They just have a hunch. That's hearsay. You cannot condemn somebody on hearsay. Now, I want to talk about the Robin Williams death because, like I said, that's the topic of discussion right now. Now, could he have committed suicide? Absolutely. But let me ask you this. And again, don't get emotional. Don't get distracted by your programming. Think from a logical point. I'm going to talk about other scenarios and other possibilities. So of all these scenarios, the most likely is that Robin Williams committed suicide. Okay, that sounds like it fits. It sounds comfortable. It sounds like something that could happen. But that's a possibility. Okay, can we accept that? That that's not fact because you weren't there. I wasn't there. The cops weren't there when he killed himself or supposedly killed himself. So can we at least agree right there that it's a possibility? Okay. Well, here's another possibility. Could he have not been murdered and made to look like a suicide? Again, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying, is that a possibility? Because that has happened in life where people have been suicided. Remember that official story of that banker that committed suicide by shooting himself over a dozen times with a staple gun? That was an official story. They said he committed suicide. Now, just imagine just a ten-penny nail. And if you do construction, I used to when I was younger, you know what a ten-penny nail is. You know, they're about that, that long, very thin, probably about the thickness, a little bit less than the thickness of a, of a pencil. Now, that's not going to kill you right away. And that's going to be pretty painful. That's a pretty interesting way to kill yourself. But yet, that was the official story. So, we have one, he committed suicide. Two, he could have been murdered. How about this one? The media is saying, and the police are saying, he died from asphyxiation. That is, lack of oxygen. Now, in the sexual world, there is a thing where people, to enhance their orgasms, either hold their breath, or they choke themselves. And this is supposed to give a much better experience. And thousands of people over the years have died because basically they forget to breathe and suffocate. Now, again, I'm not saying this is what happened, but is this a possibility? And again, think with your logic and reason. Don't eliminate emotion because that's how they control you. Could he and his wife be having sex together? And maybe he's into kinky sex and likes to be choked. And in the process of their lovemaking, he died. And his wife, loving her husband, doesn't want the media and the world to know how he died. So when she had to call in that her husband was dead, couldn't she have tried to protect him by saying he killed himself? Again, not saying that's what happened, eliminating the emotion, using logic and reason. So that is a third possibility. Okay, here's another. Could the wife, because of his depression or the fact that he owed a lot of money in all these scenarios, 
Could she have either killed him or hired somebody to kill him to collect insurance money and just claimed it was a suicide? Sure could be. Now of so that's four possibilities. Now again, I wasn't in the room when he died. You weren't in the room when he died. The media wasn't in the room when he died. The cops weren't in the room when he died. Maybe even his wife wasn't in the room when he died. Because you can um, asphyxiate yourself by yourself. There's plenty of teenagers that have died because of that. So anything that anybody says is hearsay. And just because the media says it, or even the police have an official story, does not mean that it's true, that it's accurate, that it's mis not misrepresented, or not false. Because then you're believing that 9-11 was true because of the official story by our government and by the media, that up two planes knocked down three buildings, a plane hit the Pentagon and disintegrated where there's not one trace or video evidence of a plane and a 164-foot-wide plane made a 16-foot hole in the Pentagon. You believe in the fact that the Malaysian plane, 30 minutes after the plane went down, they've already said the Russians did it. You believe that's what happens. You believe John F. Kennedy was assassinated by a lone gunman with a old pullback sniper rifle and used you know magic bullets to hit three times before the kill shot on a moving target. I'm not saying that I know. What I'm saying is, when you think logically and you eliminate the emotion, you will always know that there are always possibilities. And you know how they say something is etched in stone? Well, if you think about that even logically, well, can't you take a chisel and chisel out something in stone? I mean, look what the Egyptians did when they wanted to erase the history of a, an Egyptian king. They chiseled it out. So etched in stone means nothing because the stone can wither away. But what I'm saying is people have to stop. They have to take a deep breath. They have to think logically that there are always possibilities and nothing is a straight line. I mean, look at it this way. Just imagine if you were in court and you have a trial that could put you in jail or even put you on the death chamber for execution because they claimed that you murdered somebody. And let's say you didn't, but yet they present all of these facts that make it seem like you did. They set up evidence. They get paid off. Is anyone saying that's never happened throughout history? Now, just imagine if, so, if, if you were convicted based on falsified evidence. The whole world can sit there and say you're guilty. But if you didn't do it, it doesn't matter what people believe. People have to get this through their head that belief is irrelevant when it comes to truth. And just because something sounds reasonable does not mean there are not alternative possibilities. And this is one of the reasons why I'm even talking about this so much. This is not about Robin Williams. This is about how the media will have an agenda. An agenda is when you steer people in a direction because you will never hear the media say, we don't know what happened. We are presenting a possibility. We're waiting for further proof or we were wrong. You're not going to hear that unless they get caught. It's like somebody caught cheating. They never admit it when it's happening. They only admit it when they're caught because they have no choice. And the media does the same thing, where they've posted like images of supposedly Israel being attacked by Gaza, and they actually showed pictures of Gaza claiming it to be Israel. And they don't say anything until somebody catches it and says, wait a minute, no, that's not what you're saying it is. And they say, oh, we put the wrong stuff. Are you telling me that people that make millions of dollars and are financed by wealthy corporations, that they would make that kind of mistake? Is it possible? Again, sure. But I'm trying to get people to wake up to the fact of how easily you're being programmed. They, I've said this for years. They use your emotion. And people have stopped thinking for themselves. 
They're too busy with their life. And we're supposed to be smarter. How are we any smarter when we'll just believe anything that we hear because it sounds right or it's just easier? Yeah, case closed. Robin Williams committed suicide. That does not mean that's what happened. And again, I don't know how many times I can say this, but obviously I'm going to get comments from people that are going to say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist or this or that. I'm acting like a person that's in a court case and I'm trying to save somebody's life by protecting them with evidence because you cannot convict a person on hearsay. And, and unless you can tell me that police are not corruptible, that governments have never lied, that people have not been murdered and been called a suicide before, and the media is nothing but honest? You're kidding yourself. Because even the most programmed person in the world who believes pretty much almost everything they hear, they will sit there and admit themselves that the media has lied and they can't always be taken serious and police can be corrupted. They're human beings. And we see throughout this world the leaders have done nothing but help the 1% people get wealthier and wealthier while the 99% are basically left on their own, starving to death or getting to that point. But yet, time after time, when you hear something on the TV, when you see something on the news, when you read something in the newspaper, when you hear it on a news radio, you automatically assume that it's true because they said so. And if you look at it from an enemy standpoint, they are loving the fact that you will believe anything they say. And that's why they don't call it they say breaking news, we're reporting the official fact. What do they call it? They call it the official story. Is that reading into it? Sure could be. But that does not mean that just because they said something happened doesn't mean that they couldn't be wrong, or they couldn't have gotten wrong information, or they could be lying. But then again, he could have just killed himself. Who knows? I wasn't there. You weren't there. The media and the cops were not there. All we can do is try and build a picture. And just because the most convenient one, the easiest one, the one that sounds the most sensible, does not mean that there aren't alternative possibilities. And people have been led forever. And I've said this in several videos before, and I'll say it again, because I get a lot of new people to my channel. For hundreds of years, the masses were told by the church that the world was flat. They believed it. They believed it so much, they murdered people that thought otherwise. When people like Galileo, who investigated, who did research, who went against the masses and said, no, the world is round and the earth actually travels around the sun because we were also told that we were the center of the universe and the sun revolved around us. Well, when Galileo came along and went against the masses and didn't just use emotion and didn't just believe what he was told, he actually investigated it and said, no, this is really what's going on. Well, guess what happened to him? They threw him in jail, and that's where he died. So the masses have always been led based on what they're told. And even today, let's just put it in logical sense. Either the world is round, or the world is flat, or it's a hologram. It could be many possibilities. Let me ask you this, because it shows how easily, even to this day, we could still be programmed. How many of you have built a rocket ship, left the planet, and viewed it to see what it is? Now, as much as somebody will instantly say, oh, you're crazy, you're an idiot, you're this, see the programming? Because if you think of it logically, not one of us can verify in either direction what the Earth really is. So we're basing what we know on what we've been told. Eliminate the emotion and you will not be so easily controlled. And as crazy as something might sound, like just the fact that I said, well, the earth could be flat, it could be round, it could be a hologram, it could be anything. You don't know, you cannot prove it other than, well, I saw a video. 
that somebody else made, or I heard it on the news channels, or, you know, that's what schools taught me. Well, isn't that what programming is all about? Is creating an agenda telling you how to think instead of investigating it yourself? So you cannot truthfully answer. If you are put in court and you were swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and they said, can you prove without a reasonable doubt with your own evidence, can you prove the earth is round, the earth is flat, whatever, and you weren't able to lie? Well, guess what? you would actually have to say, no, I cannot prove it. And if they asked you, well, how do you know what it is? The only answer you can give is, well, that's what I was told. Isn't that the same thing with religion? Isn't that the same thing with government? Why is that not the same with media and our police force, which is which are both, white last time I checked, regulated by the government. The very people who are in charge of medicines, as far as regulations, in charge of food, in charge of our the way we get transportation, our education. If you think of it logically, it seems that that picture is a lot bigger than they lead you to believe. And if after watching this video, if you still want to personally attack me, Instead of speaking with logic and like a, a, a decent, regular human being, then congratulations, you are too far programmed to ever be changed. That is your problem, not mine. So this whole thing is not about Robin Williams and whether he committed suicide or not. I'll never know. But neither will you. This is about how easily you're being programmed because they use your emotions. It's divide and conquer. If you get somebody passionate into something, whether it's a good passion or a hateful passion, you are easily controlled. And that's why even these trolls and haters that I have that have been stalking me for years, who will thumb down every video because they hate me, well, they're just showing how programmed they are. Because instead of focusing on what I say, they focus on the emotion and that they don't like me. And instead of ever listening to all the things I say, they focus on one or two things that justify their anger so they can continue it without saying, you know what? This makes sense. Let's talk to this person. Let's use logic and reason. Maybe he's not as bad as I thought. None of them say that because they're agenda driven, whether they know it or not. And that's why at one time they used to bother me. Now it's, I pity them. I feel sorry for them. But they're no different from the general masses, the general public. They're easily led based on emotion. Why do you think politicians are always talking about things like uh, sexual preference, birth control, abortions, racism? Because even they'll talk religions. It's all about getting people angry and passionate so they can fight with each other because they don't stop and think about things. Like even just take religion, for example. There are people out there throughout history that have murdered people because of a God that they can't see, that they've never proven exists, is different from a God that somebody else has never seen, that they cannot prove ever existed. They will murder each other for that belief. And look at people today. There are people who say that there is a, a bearded white man that's in a cloud that loves you but is going to judge you. And if you do anything particularly wrong, you can go to hell, which is a fiery pit for, where you will suffer for all eternity. But the God loves you unconditionally. And those same people will say, well, I believe in God, even though I've never seen him, never talked to him, have no proof that they exist. I believe in him because I have faith. And those very same people, if you ever said to them, do you believe in alien life forms? In other words, in an ever-expanding universe with infinite possibilities and billions of galaxies and billions of stars and billions of planets, you're saying there's no possibility that there can't be life on other planets? And they will say, well, I've never seen an alien, so therefore I don't believe in them. Now listen to that. Listen to that logically. Take out the emotion. 
On one hand, they'll say they'll believe in God, even though they've never seen him, they can't prove it, but they b believe him based on faith because what they were told to believe, what you were told to believe. And on this hand, they will say they don't believe in aliens because they've never seen them and they don't have proof they exist. Stop and think. Eliminate the emotion and you will not be easily controlled. Now, I'm not saying that on this hand there isn't a God or there is one. I don't know. And I can't say on this hand that there are aliens or they're not. I don't know. But I am able to formulate my own opinion and not base it on what somebody else said because it makes sense. That does not mean that they cannot be manipulated. They cannot be wrong. They cannot be mistaken. They can't be just guessing. There are always alternative possibilities. And if you cannot see through that, then you are one of the programmed and you don't even know it. And if you get mad at me for pointing it out, that's your problem. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.